Since marrying Meghan Markle, Prince Harry has continually been in the spotlight. But fans of the royal family have always been fascinated by Prince William's younger brother, who's often been seen as a bad boy. Keep watching for Prince Harry's many highs and lows over the years. Despite Prince Harry's strong resemblance to Prince Charles, rumors that Charles isn't Harry's real father continue to swirl. In fact, some conspiracy theorists believe that Prince Diana's former lover, James Hewitt, is actually the real baby daddy. The so-called smoking gun, Harry has red hair just like Hewitt. According to the Daily Mail, however, Princess Diana's bodyguard claimed in a memoir that it's impossible for James Hewitt to be Prince Harry's father, as Prince Henry of Wales was born on September 15, 1984. Meanwhile, Princess Diana didn't begin her infamous fling with Hewitt until the summer of 1986, per the report. The red hair that gossips so love to cite as proof is, of course, a Spencer trait, as anyone who has ever seen a photograph of Diana's sister, Jane, for example, as a young woman, will be able to testify. Prince William finally married his longtime girlfriend, Kate Middleton, now known as Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, on April 29, 2011. After Prince Harry and Kate's sister, Pippa, interacted at the wedding, there were claims that they were secretly dating and that the younger Middleton sister was preparing to snatch a royal for herself. If you had previously hoped that the Harry and Pippa rumors would turn into a fairy tale romance, you're probably sorely disappointed. According to The Telegraph, Prince Harry himself filed a formal complaint against the Daily Star to the Independent Press Standards Organization in 2015. The paper eventually admitted that their story about the alleged romance was, quote, significantly misleading. Apparently, Harry's formal complaint was considered highly unusual, though. As The Telegraph reported, the royal household's traditional stance has been to ignore inaccurate accurate reports rather than draw attention to them by complaining. Guess that one really got under his skin. Please. Boom. Pippa Middleton is not the only woman to whom Prince Harry was linked before meeting Meghan Markle. In fact, the red-headed royal has a long list of rumored former flames. He's said to have dated pop stars, TV presenters, actresses, and models in his time, though few of these supposed relationships have been officially confirmed. In fact, Prince Harry appears to have had just two serious girlfriends before Markle. From 2012 to 2014, Prince Harry dated Cressida Bowness, who was allegedly introduced to him by Princess Eugenie. However, the actress reportedly couldn't stand the constant attention from the press, so it didn't work out. If you find the right person and everything feels right, then it takes time, especially for myself and my brother. The Duke's thing with Bowness started not long after his relationship with businesswoman Chelsea Davy ended. He'd met Davy during his gap year in South Africa, and she became his on and off girlfriend from 2004 to 2011. The Zimbabwean beauty even attended the Duke of Sussex's wedding to Meghan Markle in 2018. The press has probably exaggerated the facts at times, but Prince Harry's reputation as a hard partying prince is definitely a well earned one. In 2011, video footage of the apparently drunk royal losing his balance and falling into a pool made headlines. A royal source told Sky News this was little more than a man in his 20s letting off steam. The palace was able to brush the whole thing under the rug, but that tactic wasn't possible when Prince Harry visited Las Vegas the following year and was pictured partying naked. TMZ broke the story, releasing two images of a seemingly completely nude Prince Harry. He was allegedly seen clinging to an equally naked young woman after losing a game of strip pool in his VIP suite. The palace was forced to respond and unsurprisingly sided with Prince Harry. A spokesperson told CNN, We remain of the opinion that a hotel hotel room is a private space where its occupants would have a reasonable expectation of privacy. The British press was asked not to publish the embarrassing pictures, and for the most part, it complied. The remorseful prince told ABC News in 2013, I probably let myself down, let my family down, let other people down, but at the end of the day, you know, I was, I was in a private area and I just, there should be a certain amount of privacy that one should expect. Sources close to the palace claimed that Prince Charles once found out Prince Harry had been smoking marijuana regularly in 2002 and apparently decided that a day trip to a detox center was in order. According to The Guardian, Harry, who was 16 at the time, was confronted by his father after an aide smelled cannabis in the halls of Highgrove. Prince Charles reportedly asked his son to spend the day at Featherstone Lodge so he could get a real insight into the dangers of drug use. The young royal wasn't going for treatment. He was sent to the clinic for a good shot. Prince Charles reportedly told his aides, according to a News of the World insider, There is no point in hiding the truth. These are the facts. Let people make their own judgment. 
While Prince Harry allegedly copped to experimenting with marijuana, royal sources claimed he was careful about where he smoked it. An aide apparently told News of the World, Although his friends smoked at parties at Highgrove, Harry was mindful only to smoke in private with close friends in the local area. The palace refused to make any further comment, stating, This is a serious matter which was resolved within the family and is now closed. It's easy to take Prince Harry's side when he gets shaded for having a few too many drinks, because it's nice to see a royal acting so normal. What isn't normal, however, is wearing a swastika armband to a costume party, especially when you're a member of the British royal family. But that's what Prince Harry did in 2005. Needless to say, many people weren't happy about it. After The Sun printed the shocking image across its front page, Clarence House released a statement, which said, Prince Harry has apologized for any offense or embarrassment he has caused. He realizes it was a poor choice of costume. To make matters worse, this all took place in the run-up to Holocaust Memorial Day. What on earth was the prince thinking? Prince Harry began training for a career in the British Army in 2005 and would go on to take two tours of Afghanistan before retiring ten years later. According to sources cited by The Sun, the so-called Captain Wales helped repel a Taliban attack while stationed there. Clarence House said in a statement, Prince Harry is very proud to serve his country on operations alongside his fellow soldiers and to do the job he has been trained for. Take a life to save a life. Um, that's what we sort of revolve around, I suppose. In 2019, royal expert Duncan Larkham revealed that Prince Harry was absolutely furious when he was forced to fly home from Afghanistan because the media had discovered details about his secret deployment, putting him and his regiment at risk. Larkham revealed in the Yahoo video series The Royal Box, one of the other real lows in Harry's life was when he was dragged out of Afghanistan because his secret deployment had hit the papers, which meant he had to come home. The red hair is a Spencer trait, but Prince Harry seems to have inherited more than that from his late mother. The prince has been doing his mother proud in recent years, dedicating his time to many causes that she championed, like ending the stigma surrounding HIV and AIDS. The People's Princess, as she was affectionately known, would reportedly sneak out of the palace and make visits to HIV hospices at a time when those with the disease were largely shunned. I hope that a lot of my um mother's talents are shown in a lot of the, the work that I do." Just months before her death, the Princess of Wales walked through an active minefield in Angola, and her youngest son made that same walk in 2013. Prince Harry said in a 2019 speech via CNN, I was told just the other day of the positive transformation in Huambo since my mother walked that minefield all those years ago. According to one royal source, Prince Harry was allegedly barred from his local drinking establishment when he was just a teen. An insider claimed to the News of the World in 2002, "...since Princess Diana died, there has been a family rule that when Prince Harry is home from school, his father is at home at Highgrove." But last summer was different. Prince Harry was getting older, Prince Charles was often away on business in London, and Prince William was on his gap year. Prince Harry fell in with a bad lot at the Rattlebone Inn. There are so many fights at the Rattlebone Inn. In fact, earlier last year, Prince Harry was involved in an incident after a fight broke out over out-of-hours drinking and was barred from the inn for a while. You know, as, as I said, and as I always say, you know, um, work hard, play hard. Prince Harry appears to have calmed down significantly since then, especially now that he's married. Prince Harry once drank champagne from a prosthetic leg, but it wasn't in the middle of some booze-fueled party. In 2014, the Redhead Royal teamed up with British charity Walking with the Wounded, joining a fundraiser trek to the South Pole. Prince Harry was part of the Commonwealth team, as was The Wire star Dominic West. The actor got to know the British Royal pretty well during the three-week journey. West revealed at a press conference, Prince Harry is a fantastically nice chap. According to the media outlet, West went on to spill the beans on the wild celebrations that took place when the team finally hit the South Pole. Per West, two of the Aussie guys stripped naked and ran round the pole, but most of us, Harry included, just went on a two-day bender with the Icelandic truck drivers who had brought some lethal homebrew with them. The prince and the actor also spent time with Duncan Slater, a double amputee injured in Afghanistan during the trek. As West revealed, we all drank champagne out of Duncan's favorite prosthetic legs. Prince Harry's relationship with the paparazzi is often described as complicated. In truth, that's something of an understatement. The prince, whose mother died while fleeing from the paparazzi in Paris, has made his opinion on them known. In a BBC documentary in 2017, Harry said, 
I think one of the hardest things to come to terms with is the fact that the people that chased her through into the tunnel were the same people that were taking photographs of her while she was still dying on the backseat of the car. In 2004, a 20-year-old Prince Harry was involved in an alleged altercation with the paparazzi outside of a London nightclub, which left one of the paps with a bloody lip. After a camera allegedly hit Harry in the face as he got out of his car, the prince apparently hit back. A Clarence House spokesman released a statement saying, "...in pushing the camera away, it's understood that a photographer's lip was cut." But according to the owner of that lip, that's not how it went down. Chris' uncle claimed that Prince Harry was already safely in his car when he suddenly lost his temper. Uncle told The Guardian, "...then suddenly he burst out of the car and lunged towards me as I was still taking pictures. He lashed out and then deliberately pushed my camera into my face. The base of the camera struck me and cut my bottom lip." At the same time, he was repeatedly saying, "...why are you doing this? Why don't you just leave me alone?" Prince Harry definitely doesn't like having his photo taken. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about the royal family are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.